see what I can look what it looks like on Facebook when we go live. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Adopt a Single Mom page. If this is your first time here, I'm Donna Nelson. I'm the founder of the Adopt a Single Mom Project. Today, I have such a wonderful guest. I'm so excited about being able to share the resource with you today that we have. Um, this has been a long time coming. Lorinda and I have been talking about doing this for months on end, and I finally got together um, and we got a date nailed down to be able to come here today and share with you about child care resources in our community, how to choose a child care center, how to know if where you're looking to send your child um, is a high standard child care center, if that even matters. We're going to answer all the questions, um, where to find them, how to interview, um, what, what's the availability? What are the challenges? We want to hear from you. Post your questions in the thread, even if you're watching this on the replay, um, so we can field the questions back to uh, Lorenda um, about what are some of the challenges? What are the things that you're looking for in child care? And she's, of course, going to talk about, um, because she's from the Early Learning um, Resource Center, also known as ELRC, um, where it is the child care subsidy program. Um, and uh, I think when I benefited from it, it was coordinated child care <laughs> way yeah. back when that's totally dating myself. My son is now 27. So um, so you're going to learn also about um, this subsidy and who qualifies and how you can um, participate in this amazing um, subsidy resource. So um, so welcome. So I'm going to do a quick um, introduction. Please say hi in the comments so that we know you're watching. You might have to give StreamYard permission for us to see um, your comment or your name, um, but I'll be watching for you on our phone um, so that I can see it since we're both on our computers. Um, so let me introduce to you our guest today. Um, Lorinda Guariello is um, from Community Services for Children. She works um, as the Regional Director for Early Learning Resource Center in Region 11, um, which serves Luzerne County. Um, I know we have moms from all over Northeastern Pennsylvania that may be watching this, so she's going to um, help resource you as to whether uh, Region 11, um, located in Wilkesbury, is the right um, service for you or another. And if you call their office, they're the nicest humans on the earth. They will be more than happy to send you to the right place <laughs> if they're not for you. Um, so we're going to be able to sh we'll share all of her information. We're going to do um, questions throughout. So if you have one, just post it in the thread. Um, so let me do, um, as I said, a quick introduction um, about who you, who's going to be speaking and sharing with you today. Um, the Early Learning Resource Center is a place where families can find high quality early education opportunities, apply for assistance to help with child care costs, or access to other resources that will set you on the path to success. It is also where child care providers can receive information on improving program quality. Lorinda has been involved with the subsidized child care program for over 27 years in different roles. Over the past four years, she's advocated, supported, and collaborated with community partners um, in the ELRC Region 11 to increase quality child care and have families access quality child care for, to meet their needs. So welcome, Lorinda. Thank you, Donna. Um, and welcome to everyone who's participating today. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm hopefully going to be sharing information that is useful and helpful to you. Um, I know as single moms, you know, as, as I was myself, you know, every day is a struggle some days and you just, you don't know where to navigate. Um, I can recall every morning getting up, getting my child ready for school, getting her to wherever she needed to go, to therapies, whatever, and feeling like when I got to work, I put in a full day of work and I hadn't even started yet. So I understand, you know, the the, the many, many roles that you play and, and the juggling that you have to do. Um, so I'm here to try to help you navigate through the childcare uh, process and see what I can do to help. Um, 
what I'm kind of uh, what would like to go over is, you know, what does quality childcare mean to all of you? Um, how does, um, and I kind of want to have this more like a conversation because I want to make sure that I'm touching on the pieces that are important to you. So like when someone says to you, they, that you want your child in quality childcare, um, can someone tell me what that means to you? I don't know, Donna, I can't see the chat. So is that something that they would be? I'm chatting? watching the chat. Yeah, they would totally just, just like um in on a Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi Mackenzie. So is there anyone commenting or no? Um, not yet. I just did. One of the things um, okay. for me, um, and I'm sure Mackenzie will, she's a good conversational someone we do a live. Um, and she had littles as well. So for me, safety and security, for sure, um, okay. in the facility, not and of course, with the staff, right, knowing that um, not just that the staff has had background checks, because, you know, that doesn't determine integrity or character of an individual. Um, but what kind of training have they had in social emotional learning and those kinds of skill sets to know how to um, do what I what I would refer to as gentle parenting versus taking the time out disciplinary old school approach. So that's what the kinds of things that I looked for or would look for now as a parent knowing what I know now differently than 27 years ago. Yeah, 20, 20, yeah, 27 years ago, everything was different. Um, when So we have resources here. I have actually a booklet that says, you know, what to look for when you're looking for quality child care. Um, we can share that with anyone that contacts our office. Um, what you want to do is get involved with the program. You want to go there. You want to take a tour before you even make a decision um, of where you would like your child to go. Every child has different needs and different environments work better for one, ch children in all different areas. So, you know, one center could be really great for your neighbor and then you go there and you're like, no, nah, this is not for me. Um, that's OK. That's why there's so many different options out there. Um, just so you do know, there's there's different types of child care. So that's another really important thing to know. Um, so the state has a certification department that license all programs, um, whether they're a family daycare, whether or child care, whether they're a group child care, whether they are center based. Um, they all have to meet those requirements. So they all have to already do those background checks. I mean, that's part of the license piece of it, that there are, there are regulations in place. So all of our childcare programs in Pennsylvania are licensed. And by them virtually being licensed, they have to meet basic standards that ensures the safety of children and make sure that they have the, the, the staff in the facility and the um, equipment and, and things like that to provide appropriate child care. Then what happens is then my office gets involved with the programs once they're licensed and then they can participate in what's called the Keystone Stars program. So every licensed facility in Pennsylvania is a star one just by virtue of being licensed. Um, you know, they've met the basic criteria in order to run a child care program. Then what they do is then they can work with our quality coaches and they can increase their star level up to a star four. Um, so that what that tells you as a parent. So when you go into a facility, you can say, what is your Keystone Stars level? Um, the one caution I do tell people is star one is not bad. Um, that just means they are at entry level and basic. Some providers choose not to participate in our Keystone Stars program. So it doesn't mean that they're a 
bad provider. It just means they're choosing not to be part of our Keystone Stars program. Um, there are benefits for them to be part of the Keystone um, program. Um, a lot of it has to do with reimbursement rates and things like that, as well as they they have access to some maybe more increased grants opportunities. Um, so there is a lot of benefits for providers to do it, but there is also a lot of work involved. And as their star level increases, um, so does the quality of their teachers. There's the requirements for teachers is higher. Um, the facility has to meet other standards. They have to um, follow additional rules and, and participate in, a, in additional trainings and, and professional development and things like that. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, so we have a booklet here in our office that kind of goes through the basics of what the Keystone Stars program does for our providers. But that's a really good entrance when you go into a provider to see if it's going to be a good fit for you. Um, those are the kinds of questions you can have. And I even have like a questionnaire, like a checklist that you can go through that kind of helps you when you go to a program, you, like, just like with anything else, when even when you go into the doctors, if you don't write notes and, and write yourself a list, you're going to forget something when you leave. So this checklist kind of helps you with that so that you don't forget to ask specific questions or look for specific things that you need to be looking for. Um, so mm -hmm. we have all of those resources here at the Early Learning Resource Center. Um, and we are here to help you. Does not matter if you are in our program, the subsidy program or not, we are here for everyone that um, needs childcare or needs other community resources. So I just want to make sure, I mean, that booklet can be sent out. I, that's something, you know, Donna, we can get to you um, if you want to have that. I don't know if you have like a resource uh, place for um, your parents, um, but we can get you definitely a copy of that as well. Um, so does that answer questions about quality? Um, a bit, yes. So the resource booklet, is that um, a digital copy or only a hard copy? I believe I can get a digital copy. Um, I have a hard copy in front of me, but um, I do believe I, I can uh, find that online through the Office of Child Development and Early Learning. Yeah, and for us, all of our storage is, is digital. So okay. it's always, I mean, it's, if we were doing an event like our um, community resource event um, or something, you know, around this for Mom's Night Out, that kind of thing, we could certainly get the hard copies to hand them out. But it limits us reaching as many moms as I'll say, like, are on our list or when someone reaches out to me, I'm like, well, I have this hard copy here, you know. Um, so well, and um, we can definitely, you know, I mean, it's pretty easy to scan and, and make a PDF and make it electronic. So that's not it's not huge. It's not like a 1200 page book. Yeah. Um, so I can definitely, either way, if I can't find a digital version, I can get you, you know, a scanned version of it. That would um, be fantastic. Then we could put it in our file um, okay. for anyone to access. That would be great. Um, and then um, I loved what you said. I've heard this um, as a conversation in our, our quarterlies once, and I've heard it from other pro from providers as well, which is um, for, um, you know, those of us who are, you know, probably hyper vigilant about where our kids go, um, you know, having that four stars or a star, any star um, matters um, in our mind perceptually um, first. Um, and but I love that you're what you're saying, which is it's not the only thing that matters going to the center, yes. interviewing, seeing, seeing, listening, you know, feeling the vibe of the place, you know, so many different factors matter. And um, because as you say, you know, the intensity of doing the work to qualify, it could be a quality four center that has two stars, you know? Right. Exactly. Uh, so it's, it, so I love that you said that. So as parents are like, well, there's only, you know, all the four stars in my community or have a wait list. Um, it doesn't mean that there's not another quality, high quality um, child care center with great programming. 
And just remember, and, and new providers for the first six months cannot increase their Keystone Stars level. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if they've newly opened, they will be only a star one until after their six month provisional. So, you know, that's another thing to, to understand, um, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, we, we try on our end to get everyone involved and to increase their star levels. I mean, that's my quality coaches positions as they are to engage all of our providers. Um, but again, it is work. And right now, um, childcare is a really struggling business right now. Um, mm -hmm. What we're hearing mostly is staffing issues, which I'm sure everyone is hearing across every employment venue you can think of. Um, but childcare is really, really struggling to try and maintain because they have very strict child staff ratios that they mm -hmm. have to meet. Um, and in order to do that, they need the appropriate staff for that. So um, it has been a real challenging time for childcare right now. And we're trying to provide whatever supports we can to get them past that and hopefully um, staff so that they can provide additional care. Um, like one of the, the the strange things that has occurred um, is with regards to our subsidy program. Normally, we have quite a, a waiting list to get that funding. Um, we have not had a waiting list for our funding in well over two years now. But now what we're hearing is a lot of child care programs have waiting lists because of that staffing issue. So, yes. so that is a real true concern out there in the field. I'm working with um, a lot of community men members, partners, we're trying to, you know, see what we can do to help that situation out. Um, Harrisburg, through the Office of Child Development and Early Learning, is um, providing uh, staff uh, retention awards um, to pro child care providers. So hoping to help them retain their staff because it is a state crisis. So um, that's... Um, that's kind of like a sidebar, but just so you understand as a parent, you know, if they say they have a waiting list, that could be why. Um, and, and they are struggling out there too. And, and they want to make sure that they can provide those quality services to your children. Um, so they have certain things that they have to do to meet that. Yes. And without a doubt, we are hearing that from moms and we are hearing it from single moms that have infants. Mm -hmm. um, definitely under the age of two is where we're hearing the biggest problem. And the other um, two challenges that we're hearing, and I want you to then, um, I don't want to get lost in talking about um, some of this stuff because I want to make sure that we have time and you get to share um, about how to qualify for the subsidy, what, how that works and who and all of that. Um, but we're also hearing, um, I can't get my kid in daycare before 6.30 or 7 in the morning. I can't, you know, pick up my kid after 5.30 at night and yet I work 45 minutes away and I might hit traffic or I can't even stop at the grocery store and they close at five or 5.30 or, you know, and so there, it's not just the wait list. It's so many challenges, um, almost to the point that um, it doesn't matter what kind of program they have. Can you just watch my kids so I can go to work? <laughs> yeah, and that that could get scary too. So well, it is. It's very really concerning, one hundred percent. But we see that happening. Families are making compromises, and I did. I had to. Um, I I worked at night. I was in financial services, and I had to have people watch my kid, whoever could. Um, and 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 it's how I ended up having to make a career change because it it became um, very risky, you know, to just have anyone. And I, I don't say anyone, but I mean, like I was in a community where I didn't know very many people and he'd meet a mom at a park and she'd say, I'll watch him, you know, cause I have two kids and I'm at home at night and you're like, okay, my kid likes your kids. So, you know, and then my kid comes home with lice and we were vegetarians and she fed him hamburgers and you know, like it's like, oh my God, you know? So, 
um, you're like, yeah, this isn't working out really well. Um, so yeah, and you do like touch that. on a, 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 a lot of things there. Um, the what I'm, one thing that I've been hearing from some of our programs is with the infant care, the cost to run those classrooms because the ratio is one to four with the staffing issue is really creating hardships for a lot of our programs. So it doesn't make it right or wrong. It just, just so that people understand that there's challenges to that. Um, and the timing of the programs when they're open and when they're closed, you know, we don't, we don't control that, that, that state doesn't control that. That is their private industry. Mm -hmm. um, that is their business. They make those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, what we could do on our end to help families with that is be advocates for you. So if you're finding you need a program that's open beyond six o'clock at night or open earlier in the morning, that's information I need to know so that I can get that out to our program. So we have monthly meetings with our child care providers. We have, the, as I said, the quality coaches are on going, going out and meeting with them. You know, so if they know there's a need for those different hours, maybe we can do something and, and be advocates for that and try to make that change. You know, because I agree what I've heard over the years, and I've been involved in the subsidy program, like I said, for over 27 years, um, it's, it, everyone says they need it, but then when they open up and they get it, hardly mm -hmm. anybody uses it. So, mm -hmm. because what happens is, oh, well, Tommy's mom can pick them up after school, so they're going to leave early today. Like, but I, I may mm -hmm. need it tomorrow, but mm -hmm. so if, you have to remember that they have to keep staff on for those hours too. So we need to make sure that that information is shared with them correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is a balance that we have to come up with. But I, if you have those issues, please let me know because, and where they are, you know, if it's in certain pockets of, of areas, um, we can definitely share that information out and, and be an advocate for families that we need childcare at different hours versus what's available right now. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, that's good to know. And I, I, I do know, um, you know, our conversation about the whole infant room thing and, and those being reduced and why, and, and understanding that, you know, as a business person, I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does create a challenge for us at a community level for our families to support them. So, um, so tell us, um, since we started to touch on that, uh, tell us about the subsidy program. How, how does a family benefit from that? Who benefits? What ages benefit from that? Um, all that. So the, the subsidized child care program, um, it's now called Child Care Works. It's had an array of names over the years. A lot of people still fall on Title 20. Um, that's been like a, a terminology gone for a long time, but it is um, available to anyone who lives in Pennsylvania who is meeting our work requirement. And at this time, it's 20 hours a week or more. Um, if you are going to school on top of working, um, currently where, where that stands is, is you have to at least work 10 hours a week. And then as long as your school time is, is equals 20 hours or more. So you could be going to school full time and working 10 hours a week and you would qualify for childcare for both your work and your school hours so that you can, you know, if you wanted to go to, um, you know, a community college, um, we could cover the childcare for that as well. Um, so the 20 hours is the piece there. So if you're in school, it's 10 hours of work plus 10 hours of school or more. Or if let's say you're only going to school five hours a week, then you'd have to work 15. So that it equals that 20 hours of minimum activity. I got that. So how are you measuring the school though? Is it traveling back and forth? Is it number of credits? I mean, it's the hours that you need to spend 
So the same thing with work. So we even provide transportation hours for your work. So let's say you're working seven to one, um, but it takes you a half hour to get to work. So you, what would qualify for childcare would be from like, you know, 630 to 130, you know, that's, but the, um, the hours usually with the school is we count how many, like a three credit course is usually three hours, you know, a week. Um, so whatever the school is considering the hours is what we would count. Um, okay. So you, you couldn't really do three, three classes because that would only be nine credits, but it doesn't really allow you like travel and study time. Study time could get tricky. If we if if the school's willing to document that it's a required study time, then we would count it. So a lot of times they have what's okay. um, labs and things like that, that that you have to do outside of the classroom. We would count that. Yeah. Yeah. But study time, no, that's that's, that's kind of that's not a documented hour. But Got what it. I always tell. <laughs> Give us everything you got and we'll see what we can do to make you eligible. I mean, really, you know, it's that's not your job to 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 figure all of that out. Give us what the documents that we need. There is a training form from your school. There is an employment form for your employer. Send that in to us. We will work through it and see if there's a way to make you eligible for our program. Yeah, so. I think that's that's really good to say, because I know for me, if I go on your website or I've heard this and, and you said you have to work 20 hours and I work 15 and I'm taking, you know, four classes, which is 12 credits. And that still makes me short. Um, I, I suck at math, so don't count my don't do the math with me because um, I think that's over 20 hours. But nonetheless, um, then I'm already going to discount myself and just say I'm not going to jump through the hoops. I'm already stressed and overwhelmed. I'll just, you know, I'm not figure eligible. out how to make, I, I'm not eligible. I'll just, you know, you know, skip yeah, it. And I don't, I don't like to see people do that because really that's what the staff here are for is let's, um, let, let's walk it through. Let's see what you're doing. I mean, we're here to help you and we're here to make you eligible if at all possible. We have to follow our rules and our regulations because we are governed by the state, but, um, you know, like a lot of times, um, if you maybe get overtime, but it's not guaranteed, but you show us for four weeks in a row, you did do the 20 hours, that makes you eligible. Mm -hmm. So if I have a four week schedule that documents the 20 hours a week, you know, even if that's maybe not what happens down the road, or maybe in the winter, it goes down a little bit. As long as when you apply, you're meeting that 20 hours, you can keep that eligibility for a whole year now. Um, that's been a change um, not, not too long um, in the past, but um, we used to do six month evals. Now we do them annually. You have to be eligible at the application time. What happens after you're determined eligible won't need to be reviewed until next year. So we have okay. families now. I mean, if you even lose your job, we can continue to pay that child care for the whole year after you are eligible. So so that gives you time to find another job. And there were, there's no penalty for you not working at that time. Um, the only thing that would possibly happen is if you let us know you lost your job, your co-payment would go down. So how the subsidized child care program works is, once you're determined eligible, you meet our income guidelines, and then that's all based on your family size and your income. Um, then we follow um, a co-payment chart, and then you're assigned a specific co-payment for a weekly amount. That weekly amount is what you pay regardless of how many children you have in care. Um, and then the rest is billed to us by the provider um, and, this, and the uh, ELRC pays that. One of the few things that does happen is some of the times our reimbursement rate does not meet what the provider charges, they're private. So there is a possibility they could 
transfer those additional charges on to our families. Um, we really don't have any control over that right now, but mm -hmm. um, at this time, but that's kind of how it goes. Like you're assigned a copayment, not necessarily you may have additional uh, fees that the provider mm -hmm. puts on you, but um, sure. the subsidy program itself is you're assigned a specific copayment based on your household size and income. And okay. I have all of that information that I can share with you. Um, I don't know if you can post it on the Facebook page afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you, um, like, if you're a family of this amount, this is the gross annual income. Again, I caution you to have that, oh, well, I'm over that, so I'm not eligible. You know, there are specific things that would take into account and might lower that amount. One of the big things that does lower that amount, and I'm sure uh, many of us experience this now, is if you have medical deductions out of your pay, like your, your employer premium, um, if that exceeds 10% of your annual income, we can then start deducting an amount off of your annual income before we determine your eligibility. So mm -hmm. that's really why I say, come to us, let us take a look. Even if it's a verbal, we, you know, I would be glad to sit down with anyone and, and work it out um, and see, you know, if there is a way you could be eligible and maybe not having to go through all of those hoops in order to get that application done. Um, yes. You know, yeah. we can do that off the cuff a little bit, but I would caution you doing it on your own just because there are so many little nuances that we could talk about um, and, and to make sure that we're gathering all of the correct information mm -hmm. um, before you decide if you're eligible or not. That's so great. So what might be the minimum that's, um, based on income or family size of, of a copay that a family might pay and what might be the maximum? Not considering the, the kind of, um, if, if the provider doesn't actually um, accept, you know, their, the copay plus what you um, pay, you know? So, so um, like, are you looking for a range? Um, yeah. Right. Like might a family, is it go by per day or per week? How do you do that? Per week. So, oh, okay. so the copay is per week. Um, and it, it, it is strictly based on your household size and your income. And then um, it's a, it's a fluid chart that changes every year with the federal poverty income guidelines. Um, okay. So we get a new chart every, every year in May. Um, and that changes. And actually, September, we just had a huge change to it, um, where a lot of the copayments were lowered um, mm -hmm. by the by Harrisburg. Um, so we had to we adjusted many of our families copays to minimal. Um, the, the minimum copayment is five dollars. And then the then depending on your income, it would increase. And it's like a huge guideline scale. Um, but I can share that with you as well so that at least you can see, um, you know, the basic. I mean, most families are somewhere between two family members and six family members. Mm -hmm. You know, this, the copay chart goes all the way up to, I think, 19 or 20 family members. But oh, geez. Um, <laughs> we don't have any moms in our circle that have that many in their. Family. I would hope not. Um, <laughs> Just to kind of give you a real quick idea. So like a family, uh, a mom with um, two children. So that's a family of three. Mm -hmm. um, in order to be eligible for an, an application, um, they have to be making less than $46,060 gross a year. And then... The, 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 we just had another new change to our program where once you're eligible for our program, there's, you can now earn additional income before you're ineligible. So they've moved that up to the 300% of the federal poverty income guidelines, um, which is really great for our families because what was happening is just, I mean, for your reference, at application, you have to be below 200% of the federal poverty income guidelines. You could have only earned up to 235 in order before you would be found ineligible and over income for our program. It's now been 
lifted up to 300%, which is a pretty significant increase. So like a family of three, if you're eligible, now you can earn up to $69,090 and still remain eligible for our program. But not at the entry point. You still have Correct. to be 200% or below, but it allows for that income mobility yep. while you're in there without having to now, every little dollar that you make extra exactly. is going into childcare. Yeah. Exactly. So I know I had a mom that called me and was like, my, my employer wants to give me a raise um, and I'm afraid to take it because I think it's going to find me ineligible for your program. And if I lose the childcare funding, um, that, that would, that wouldn't be worth that extra dollar an hour, you know, yeah, there, yeah. There, it's give and take. And, and I sat down, figured all the numbers out and said, no, you're going to be fine. Please take that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm trying to, you know, really, really express is call us, talk to my staff, talk mm -hmm. to me and, and say, can I run this by you? Would this really work for me? Because this money is here. This is, this is a really good benefit for families that are struggling with childcare cost. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's astronomical. And we all know that. Um, so, you know, let's yeah, use what? it. Absolutely. I, and I'm so grateful for it. You know, when I was going through my divorce and was self-employed working from home, um, I was really lucky um, that there was this amazing child care center that opened up like literally down the road for me. And that was um, Country Charm Early Learning Center. And I know you know Heather really well. Um, when she was first opening at Canaan was like one of her first kiddos there. And um, you know, she just had a, an amazing center from the very beginning. And I just needed him to not be under my feet and in front of the TV for a few hours, a couple days a week. And she's the one that actually introduced me to, uh, well, what was coordinated childcare at that time. I, I didn't even know that it was a resource. And I couldn't believe at that time, you know, cause I was so poor it was $5 a week. And I, I felt guilty, like leaving him there and paying her that, like, is this a real thing? Like, I couldn't believe that she was getting compensated, you know? So of course we've come a long way since then on many fronts. And, uh, just, uh, but, and that brings up one point. Um, so especially nowadays with families working from home, if you're working from home, you still qualify for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. We still, we know you can't do your best work, even if working from home, when you have a toddler running around your house. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't do it with a puppy running around my house. So, you know, I can't even right. imagine, you know, a child. So we want you to put your child into a quality program so you can focus on your job while the child care program can focus on the development of your child. And yeah. that's really um, important that you want that child to be not sitting in front of the television while you're working. Um, yes. You know, we do work with um, the teen parent program, the teen elect program, and the same thing. If they're a teen parent and they're home going to school, we want to get that child in the program so that they can focus on their high school um, studies and can get through that without having to juggle and try to, to do two things at the same time. Yeah. You're, you're opening up an, a new segue there. Um, for one of the questions that one of our parents asked, and then someone that asked me before the program so that I could ask you. So tell us, um, I know that it's fr from birth to age 13, right? Correct. So, um, and I think that goes beyond what, what I knew. So tell us, so are, are most child care centers providing care for 13 year olds? Um, and At least what about the ones the that have school age programs? So the ones that have school age programs, there are some programs that maybe only go up to pre-K, you know, before kindergarten, you know, oh. it, but specific programs. I mean, 13 is usually the cutoff. Um, we do allow for children over 13 if they have a developmental or behavioral developmental age that is lower. Um, it's like let, uh, if you have a doctor who says this child, your child's really only functioning at a 10 year old level, but they're 14. Um, if we get that documented and the program is willing to still take that child, that's 
a little bit of the caveat there, but mm -hmm. um, we can fund that child through age 18. So, so what about the kids that are doing homeschooling that the parents are working during the day and they need some place for their kiddos to go, but being in a facility, maybe um, I'll just um, feed Natasha's question to you because this is a question I get a lot from moms that have kiddos that are either on the spectrum or have special needs and being in a school environment is too, too stimulating or they've been bullied too many times and now they need to be home to be schooled. So where, where do we put those kiddos? So there, there is the uh, rule that if a, um, like a public school is available, like we couldn't pay full-time childcare for a school-aged child between the, a normal school year times. So like from seven to three or whatever, um, because the, the school is available to, you know, meet those, typically meet those needs. Um, although I, I understand there, there's some specific concerns. Um, so that would be a challenge because we can't pay full-time care for a school-aged child during the school year. We can do it during the summer. That's not a problem at all. We could do before and after um, if that's something that could fit into, you know, even though the child may be homeschooled during the day, um, what we used to do, and I'm not positive that's how we do it now, but we kind of know what the school district's schedule is. So, you know, we would pay part-time rate for that child for a few hours in the afternoon if you want if that was you know something that was going to work out for the child if you can find a program that's willing to work with you on that we would definitely do that it doesn't matter that they're homeschooled we just couldn't pay for child care during the day because schools are open and that the regs don't allow us to pay full-time child care yeah the i was we were able to do that was um during COVID. Um, there was some exceptions that were allowed um, because mm -hmm. of schools closing and things like that. And if they need a child care full day, we were able to pay that for that. Time. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about um, specifically so that moms could work during the day, um, but you can't work. And I mean, unless you're working from home, of course, which so many are, um, and then take your kid to an after school program at you know, 3.30 or something, you know, so, um, well, it sounds like there's lots of opportunity, meaning, you know, offerings and, and ways that you're willing to support, but there's just a lack of, of resources to actually, like programming resources to do what you're willing to fund. So, Natasha, do you hear that? You need to go fix that gap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and, so. and, you know, if you have a specific question like that, please call me. I mean, because it's, it's so much easier to, to, to learn the whole details and the specifics and then see what we can do to work around it. Um, we do have a lot of school age programs that are within the schools. I mean, so um, that, you, you know, a lot of our programs like contract out with the school district. Um, and that is something that's important to know, you know, that yes. you know, they can use those programs too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, you just said something that's super important there, which is if you're looking for something that you don't know where it is in the community around child care and child care programming, call because you know who all those programs are and where to find them and so forth. So that's um, a really great thing to it seems like it would be obvious to do that, but until you said it, I went, yeah, we don't have to sit here and figure all that out right now. They can no, just call you. No, no. And, and <laughs> um, so, yeah, what I'm going to do is, um, uh, Donna, I can share with you the, the resources that I put together. Um, then you can post them. I guess you post them on this the Facebook page here, mm -hmm. um, which will give you contact information. Um, what I did do could because you've covered all of Northeast Pennsylvania, technically, it sounds, I think most of the counties that you touch are in either in region 11 or region 12. Yeah. So I, so I put together like a, a quick handout um, for those six, count, uh, 12 counties um, 
which should cover the majority of the Northeast. But mm -hmm. even Community Services for Children manages five ELRCs. So it's my parent agency that runs 11 and 12, but they we also even go south of this area, Schuylkill, Berks, um, Lehigh, Northampton, you know, so I don't know how far down that way you go. As far um, as we go is Monroe County. Monroe. So Monroe mm -hmm. is in region 12, yes. which is what I thought. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to have, I have all of that information ready to go to send to you so you can post it, um, with phone numbers, emails, um, the way the easiest way to apply for a program is through the compass website which i hope most of you are somewhat familiar that's where you would get food stamps um or medical assistance it's the same thing you just go on and say you know the application and now you're applying for child care and then that application comes to us electronically and then we start that process we send you a missing information letter telling you everything we need along with whatever you completed online, and that gets your application going. Um, we have 30 days to complete an application. Um, so we work with you, you know, we said, oh, did you get this? We need one more thing. You know, we're gonna try to pull all that together. Um, and then we're able to then make that as determination if you're eligible or not. And that's kind of like the, the best way to get our application process. Also through the Compass website is where you can go and look for childcare. So there is a childcare find, childcare programs right there on the Compass website. And all of our programs are in there. So it's, I mean, we can do that for you too, but it's also mm -hmm. something you can do on your own. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna field, there's some questions in the thread that I want us to field, but I want it, one that's not there that I wanna ask you while we're on it. So for someone that, maybe hasn't been working but needs child care it's the what comes first the, the cart or the horse right i can't get a job because i don't have child care and i can't get assistance <laughs> <Yes>. because <laughs> i don't have a job so tell us a little bit about how that works because that's changed a little bit right yeah yeah it and it is frustrating and it's it's not as grueling because of the current situation with not having a waiting list right now um so you, people can apply for our program with a promise of a job within 30 days. So if you go on an interview and they say, yes, we want to hire you, your start date is November 30th. You get us the application immediately. We will work as best as we can um, to get that all set up. So you've been determined eligible based on that promise of a job and help you find child care to start on that day that you're supposed to start working. Um, I don't want to say I promise that will always happen, but we will try to make that happen. It's, it's really challenging. I will tell you, um, we're easily getting 100 to 150 applications a month um, okay. currently. So the volume of work is really, you know, and again, I mean, I'm currently full staff, which is very fortunate. Um, but, you know, we do process them as quickly as we can. If you do have that situation, you know, I'm my, my phone is open. Um, I'm definitely someone you can call. And if we can get something moving to just make it all happen for you, we will do the best we can. Fantastic. So let's go to the question. So I left Natasha's up because I wasn't sure if we fully answered it or not. So um, can you see her question on the screen? I can. Okay. Um, I know you said that you cover children up to age 13. This might answer Aaron's question as well. Are there any stipulations or extended coverage for individuals with special needs? Yes. So that was what I was referring to with the medical or a behavioral um, documentation we can extend beyond the age of 13 with with that particular documentation and that the the part we can promise is the funding is available um, what we would have to really work with is find a program that's able to work with your older child um, with those special needs um, that that could be where the, the the barrier comes in. But if we have it documented that the child is functioning at a lower level than, you know, over 13, 
I have paid for children in care up through age 18. Um, you know, it, it because it developmentally happen. they were correct. 13 or below. Correct. Perfect. So Aaron's question um, is not necessarily geared towards special needs, but also about 13. It goes to age 13. Well, so is so is this for specific after school programs, any offered in the local school district, after care, homework, help, et cetera? So this speaks to maybe what you were saying about some programs are in the school system. Or yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure the majority of our child care programs cover up till 13 as well, because they know we pay through that. Um, when, one of the things that change, just changed recently with our program is we used to end care immediately when the child turned 13, but now because of that annual redetermination, we like, so if your child turns 13 in February and they're not gonna, they, but school's not even over for the school year, we would continue that child until the next redetermination. So mm -hmm. that, that really helps so it's a 13 plus now a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, it's not mm -hmm. like it used to be the minute they turned 13, we were ending care regardless of when that birth date fell. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm really happy for that change because that doesn't make any sense. Just yes, your child doesn't miraculously change in one day at the yeah. when they turn thirteen. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, Aaron, does that answer your question? So, part of the answer would be to go to the Compass website and look for childcare providers and um, that have school age. That have school age. And um, if you need and help with that, I mean, we can definitely do that. So if you need help finding programs that meet whatever need you're doing, just call us and the staff here are, are able to go in and do those searches for you as well. Yeah. And I know Erin, she's in Lackawanna County, so she would be under um, 12. Region 12. Mm -hmm. yep. but, and we'll, but we have, we'll have that information for her. Yep. Okay. And then the last one so far um is tara um so when my son starts kindergarten his current daycare doesn't take um school age can they go to two different centers absolutely Good question absolutely yes so um if you want um you know the child care we even do it split for like summer and school year you can switch back and forth um from different programs but we have had the situation where um, some programs won't take school agers, um, but you need that after school at their um, a different program, then yes, we can definitely pay two different providers, not for the same time. So we've had situations where a program was available in the morning, but not after school. So they could go to one program from six to nine, go to school all day, and then they could actually go to a different program at the end of the day, but we couldn't pay for two morning sessions at two different providers. Sure. So, it, so it's just, um, but if it's separate timing, um, that also helps with people who work night shifts too. Like if you're in school and uh, working, um, if you need a program for nights, but this one doesn't open at night, you could, we can pay the day one for the day hours you need, and we can pay the night one for the night hours that you need. Um, so, so that we can split that as well. Wow. That's awesome. So, okay, Tara, did that answer your question? I guess that was pretty straightforward. All right, everyone. So if you have any other questions, go ahead and post them now. Um, and if you're, again, if you're watching on the replay, post your questions, um, we'll, um, provide the information that Lorinda has given as far as contact information and some of the details. Um, and if you are a member, um, we will post um, the stuff, information of the PDFs and so forth in our file section. So I'll give you the heads up when we do that. Um, so, uh, so Lorinda, um, yes. and just in case we get some more questions, go ahead and wrap us up. What, what is some last good information that we need to, that our moms need to know um, about your program or child care in general? And well, one of the things is, is, and we do help our families beyond child care. So, you know, we have a good opportunity when we're talking to our families 
um, to not only ask them, you know, hey, well, you're struggling with this too. Well, well, here now, you know, here's all the food pantries that you can use. Or if you're having trouble with um, developmental issues, well, we have connections with early intervention or the IU. Um, so we've had the ability to pull together all of the resources for families. And it gives you like a one person contact. So we're not throwing you all over the place to mm -hmm. um, get that because that is so frustrating. You know, yes. even, even, even I, I mean, if I pick up my phone, I mean, I picked up my phone and it was a region 12 parent and guess what? I helped her. I, we're, we're, I don't like to be switching people all over the place because I know how that feels for me. You yes. know, no, I don't yes. want to be holding and, and talk to three different people and tell my story to three different people. Um, <laughs> yes. We we are all together here working for the same purpose and um, doing what we need to do to help our families. So, I, I mean, it's on top of child care, even if you don't qualify for our program, you know, we are definitely here to help families. We want your children to be successful. Um, we want you to be successful as their parent to provide for them. And we are here to support you in any way that's possible. So awesome. Such a great wrap up. So, um, and yes, thank you for all that you do. And thank you for making it as easy as possible. Um, and um, I hope that we're somewhere on that list when the single moms who are out there working um, as a resource to send them to us so that we can continue to give them a love. Oh, absolutely. That's so important too. So, um, well, thank you everyone for your questions and for showing up um, here today. And um, Lorenda, thank you so much um, for taking Thanks the for time for your schedule. Anytime. Um, I'm available and I will get you all of those resources tomorrow um, awesome. so that you can get that out to everyone. Awesome. Thank you.